Sure, I thought it was, uh, I mean, obviously a real physical game. Um, and it's going to be any time you play Eastern Michigan, first of all. Um, but then when you go up against players like Bowdry and Dobbins and Will Cooper and, and Tyler Jones, the you know, football player, all of them have a football player mentality, very, very physical uh, team. And, and it was hard fought. It was very hard fought. Baskets were tough to come by. Rebounds were tough to come by. And, uh, you know, when you knock down a shot, you really felt like you accomplished something in a, in a game like this. So um, uh, yeah, I was really, really happy to, to get, uh, I mean, we finished first round of Mac West play at 4-1. and one, And three of our games were on the road. We were able to pick up two of the three wins. And, um, and so that part of things is good. Uh, obviously, we had the opportunity, lost at Ball State. But still, it's, it's, uh, it's not bad for our first round of, uh, of Mac West play. Talk about it. Couple of elements. One, you fall behind early, but no real panic to come back. And then the other thing you've talked about is kind of when you get a team down and just 41 27 and stop not in the throw. That part of things maybe didn't happen. Yeah, both of them. I thought we showed great fight uh, early in the game. There are times when we've started off poorly or when we've had a bad stretch of the game and we have not shown the concentration or the fight to, to get it back. And we were able to get it back pretty quick and, uh, and obviously take, a, I think, a seven-point lead into halftime. So that part of things was really good. Then we, then we got up, and what I, what I talked to the team about afterwards is we got to pay attention to the big picture. And the big picture is that um, when we got ourselves up 14, uh, we took a couple of uh, took two or three ill-advised shots, uh, quick shots, and we also we also had a couple of blow bys defensively, and we combined a, a two or three minute stretch in there with with bad shots as well as. Um, as well as uh, uh, defensive breakdowns. And you can't come in with a 14, 15 point lead, 12 point lead, whatever it is. You can't come, it doesn't matter who's in there. You can't say, well, the ball game is put away and it's time to get my points. You know, and, and uh, you've got to do what you've been doing. You've got to execute what you've been executing. And, uh, uh, and we didn't do that uh, for that stretch. So I think that it's a great learning tool for us uh, to, to, to be able to have a lead like that, have them come back, have to hang on. Uh, and at the same time, it didn't cost us a game. Uh, we, we, were able to, uh, we were able to do that. We'll, we'll definitely be able to show them. Uh, there's plenty uh, for me to complain about um, come tomorrow's film session. And so we'll, we'll, we'll be able to look at that and say, do you see now how you lose a lead, what, what, what you're capable of doing uh, and what another team is capable of doing if you lose concentration for as little as a three or four minute stretch. You talk about Sean Teeth seem to get it back offensively, find that rhythm a little bit. Yeah, Sean Teese and David both. It was great. To, I thought they played efficient games. I mean, David went uh, 5 of 13. Sean Teese went 8 of 14. I thought that they were very efficient uh, games when we weren't shooting the ball well from the perimeter again. It's not abnormal to not shoot the ball great from three when you're on the road. Um, and we talked a little bit about that uh, at halftime and the fact that you should try and get more, more going to the rim. And, uh, and, and try and take easier shots when you're on the road and attack the rim a little bit more. And, and uh, you know, Flynn, uh, Flinard and LaMarcus did, uh, did a nice job of catching the ball in there and, and working fairly well in there. Um, but I thought that, I thought that uh, Shantice and David in particular got a lot of things done around the basket. The uh, LaMarcus seven blocks, and, and that changes the game. Can you talk about also his matchup with Bowdry a little bit? So you said it was a difficult matchup for him. Obviously, there's a foot speed difference and a size difference on that sort of thing. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, LaMarcus makes up for a lot of sins that you can make on the perimeter, and we made plenty of them today. Uh, we had a lot of blow buys. They have quick guards. I mean, Tyler Jones is quick. Will Cooper's quick. They have some guys that, that can blow by you if you're, not, if you're really not checking. And when Mike Riddell gets in foul trouble like he did, and Shantice got in foul trouble in the first half, uh, those are two of our better on-the-ball defensive players. And, so you, and then when Mike checked back in, I, I, I didn't think he did a great job. I thought he was worried about picking up another foul. So he didn't do a great job of really checking the ball, <clears throat> excuse me, like he's capable of. And that put a lot of pressure. They were able to put a lot of pressure and get to the rim. And LaMarcus was back there and, uh, and was able to make up for some of those blow buys that we made on the perimeter and get some of those blocks. Obviously, he had five blocks until those last two uh, there uh, uh, at the end of the game that were uh, the, the thing that I thought was great about that was that even though the game for the most part was over with, LaMarcus was still fighting. So I thought that that was significant 
Um, now we got most of his block, the other five blocks uh, from within the framework of the game itself, which was very significant. Um, because if he doesn't do that, if we don't have that presence around the rim, then I think they're getting to the rim a little bit more. Uh, we just didn't play as good a perimeter defense as we were capable of. But as uh, uh, you know, it's our fifth straight opponent. Now this, we, we hold Eastern to 33% from the field. So it's our fifth straight opponent that we've held under 40%. That, I'm really pleased with that. Coach, on a play that, that seemed like it would fuel an Eastern Michigan run, which was the Zane Day block and then the Will Cooper run out dunk on the other end, your team managed to respond with a 9-0 run. Can you just talk about, about the poise in that situation and how that came about? Yeah, you, you know what went through my head at that time? I wasn't, I, I mean, I feel bad for Rams. I, I mean, it's, it's really difficult to be sitting, to be sitting at home. Uh, I'm sure he's listening to the game. And Charles, a really good friend of mine, and uh, to, to to have this game last year, I was sick with, and I had to sit back in the hotel room, and I and I and I listened to to parts of it uh, throughout the game. It's very difficult uh, to to do that. When I got the film, when I got the film though last year, we had a point in time in the game where we uh, Joe got his first dunk maybe of his career. Um, I mean it was, and we took a lead. And Joe was real excited that we come back down the court, and Joe's jumping up and down, and we did not get matched up in transition. And, uh, and they came down and hit a three right behind us. And when they, the same thing happened there, Zane Gay gets a shot, a shot block, Will Cooper's run, uh, or he gets a block shot, Will gets his, uh, Coop gets his run out dunk, and, they come, and we had a play called, and we come down the court, and they, they lost Dre. Uh, they lost Andre Ricks, who's obviously one of our best three-point shooters. They didn't get matched up, and Dre caught it and didn't hesitate, pulled and hit a three right back after that. I thought that was a, a really key moment in the game when they were making a run on us, and then we were able to respond with some more stops and some more points there at the end, as you mentioned, a 9-0 run. You talked about you talked about the efficiency of Gould and Gary, and David said that he wasn't didn't think he was aggressive as he needed to be at Ball State. He, he was when you're on the road. And, you know, it's not a great, pretty game. Those are the two guys you're relying on to find a way to get it done. And you kind of did, right? Yeah, exactly. I, and I don't know if this team is capable of playing a pretty game. You know, and I'm fine with that. I really am. It's it's just find a way to win. You know, and and we gotta we gotta bang a little bit. We gotta be physical. Uh, the rebounding thing, I'm still just perplexed completely about. Although I understand it more in this game when you're playing against players like uh, uh, Coop and and Bowdry and and Dobbins. Um, and Tyler Jones, who gets his nose in there as well, um, but but we got to we got to figure out a way to get that same that, that that, and then now we're going up against Buffalo, who's the best rebounding team in the conference, uh, on Tuesday, so those those things concern me. But at the same time, I thought that David and and uh, Shantice, again they, they their points were key. Um, they were able to they played with a lot of poise in there when they did catch the ball in the paint. Uh, they went to work in there. They were able to spin off of pressure a little bit. And, uh, and get to the rim. I, I thought that that was uh, very, very important for us. You talked about going to the East now. I mean, I mean this, there is a chance that, you know, when you guys come back to the West, there could be a lot of separation, a lot of things to be done. A lot of, you just talk about kind of this next stretch and the importance of it. Well, they're all important. Um, it is, I mean, I hate to sound, or I hate to talk coach speak. Uh, I mean, they really are all important. I, I don't know as much. I mean, I've seen some film uh, on some of the Eastern teams. Uh, obviously, there's more, uh, you know, there's the, the, the balance of power is in the East right now. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they don't have as many injured players. Uh, you know, when you look at Eastern and Los being out, uh, we've talked about some of the other players that are out as well uh, throughout the West. Um, you know, we didn't know if Shantis was going to play today. Uh, yeah, but due to a, a slight concussion, Donald Lawson. So there's plenty of those things that that are out there. Uh, I'll know more by tonight, uh, you know, about about Buffalo and the East. I have seen a little bit of them, but uh, there's no question that it's a tough stretch. And uh, you know, we've got to try and just pick up as many as you can. You know, coming through, there is a chance. There is a chance that there can be some separation. There's also a chance you could be on the wrong end of the separation uh, as as you go through it. Um, you know, we'll just have to we'll just have to wait and see and and prepare and see how our kids respond. I, I you know I, I do feel good about the fact that at least the first two games that we play in the East are at home. Uh, we have Buffalo on Tuesday night and then we have Kent State uh, on Saturday at home. So the fact that two of them are at home, we do have a chance. Um, but but in order to win, 
you know, to win anything of significance, to, you know, in order to, to, win a, to contend for a MAC West championship or a number one seed overall, you're going to have to win on the road. And, and, uh, and that, uh, from what I understand today, a lot of road teams won. So you're going to have to pick up some wins on the road and, and, uh, and hold serve at home. If you can't hold serve at home, then you've got to pick up a couple of wins on the road to make up for that. That's kind of what we're looking at going into this. We know it's, a, we know it's going to be a very tough stretch. And the way the games fall, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I do know that us and Ball State uh, have the exact same games. You know, we play three at home and three on the road, and they're against the same teams at home and the same teams on the road. So I do know that much. Um, but, but in terms of uh, uh, the separation and how you pick things up and, and what's going to happen here, I mean, who knows? We, we, we just, uh, just got to try and prepare and see how your kids respond. Coach, you talked yeah. about uh about Davis and Shantice's offensive efficiency. Defensively, they combined for eight steals and 13 rebounds and held uh, Eastern starting backcourt to four for 15 shooting. Which do you think was a more key component of the game, their offensive ability or their defensive ability? I think our defense is, is going to be the key to us all year long. Our offense is going to come and go. Um, I mean, we went 14 of 28 three, three games ago from the three-point line. And, uh, and then in the last two games, uh, we've shot the ball abysmally from, from three. So it's a very difficult thing. Our, our defense, though, I mean, you can't – your offense, especially on the road, is definitely going to come and go. Um, you, can, you can pack defense and, and effort in your, in your suitcase and bring that with you. I mean, that can go with you whether you're at home or whether you're on the road. So defensively, to be able to – again, and it's not just – I don't really look at steals and blocks. I mean, LaMarcus makes up for a lot of sins back there, as we talked about. But what we really look at is the field goal percentage defense, and that's what we really look at. We're able – if you're in the right position and you get a steal because of it, then great. Um, but the field goal percentage defense is something that I'm far more concerned about because if you can get uh, your opponent to take uh, a shot and miss it, uh, then that allows you to get out and run a fast break. And for us, uh, who's not a very good offensive basketball team, uh, that, that gives us our best, best chance at scoring is in the open court. We, have, we do have some guards that can make some plays. We have time for one more. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.